everybody. Looking at the camera. Looking at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at two cameras. I know. Hi, everybody. This is Tara Madden from the Boys and Girls Club of Western Pennsylvania. I'm here to give you another exciting episode of cultural cooking. And as we say um, in France, bonjour. Bonjour. Right? Bonjour. You say it better. Bonjour. He speaks French. Un petit peu. Say it again. Bonjour. 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 Anyways, we are going to do um, a French sandwich. I'm all about the sandwiches lately. It's a, I don't know. It's summer. I like to eat sandwiches and salads and eat little light bite-sized things. But this will be a little heavy, though, but you'll like it. This is a take off of um, Croque Monsieur, which is a, ham, a grilled ham and cheese sandwich usually topped with a Mornay sauce, um, which is bechamel and Swiss cheese or Gruyere. Um, but today we're going to do, um, and also the croque madame, which is uh, croque monsieur plus an egg, okay? So croque monsieur means uh, Mr. Crunch. That's the exact translation. Today we're gonna do a Monte Cristo, which is a take off of the croque monsieur. Monte Cristo, Nobody really knows where that the name came from for this sandwich. It popped up in the 1930s um, in California, uh, around Disneyland and different, uh, the Brown Derby, old fashioned classic restaurants, it sort of turned up. So I'm gonna talk you through this process. It's a lot of fun. And it's one of my favorite sandwiches. Okay. Let's put this down so we can see what we're doing. Okay. So the, Cro the Monte Cristo is a three-tiered sandwich. So it has bread, meat and cheese, bread, meat and cheese. And it's a combination of something that's savory, which is a little bit salty and like a meal, and something that's sweet because the whole sandwich will be coated in um, French, French toast dip, a custard dip. Okay, so that's eggs, milk, nutmeg. And it's gonna be served a little bit like a dessert, but it's gonna be have that sa savory sandwich taste. Okay, so we're gonna start out with the very first thing. Oh, first, let me talk about pans before we actually start. This is a, um, a flat pan. It's, I forget the proper name of it, but um, I use it for anything like griddle pan maybe griddle yeah it's a flat griddle right this is a flat griddle pan this one is non-stick it works really well versus using a giant um, skillet pan because the, you don't want to heat up a giant surface you're not going to need you want just the right amount of surface for your food and this one allows for me to show you what i'm doing a little bit better it's just a nice nice flat pan i have always this is good for pancakes um french toast Anything, um, Korean pancakes, all kind, American pancakes, crepes, all sorts of things. Okay, so here we go back to the cutting board area. All right. Have you ever had a Monte Cristo pancake? It's been a long time. Okay. Really, really great dish. And not only the restaurants sell these, you know. Yeah, but I hear that Disneyland restaurant you were talking about, mm -hmm. I hear they still sell it there. Yeah, it's famous there yeah. now. Mm -hmm. But not a lot of like your regular all-American buffet restaurants um, sell these. Okay, so first of all, I have a big loaf of Italian bread. You could buy sliced Italian bread, and that's fine, pre-sliced Italian bread. But I wanted to show you a nice way to cut the bread. If you buy um, a loaf of bread, this sandwich is going to be round. Um, in recipes, I've seen people use square bread. So they buy the pre-cut um, sliced Italian breads or white breads, and then they cut the crusts off. We're not going to be that um, fancy. We're going to go ahead and work with um, our loaf bread because it seems more authentic. So I call this the um, heel of the bread. So I'm just going to cut that off. And I keep that in, in my... Um, bag for later because that's kind of like uh for good luck but it's also a nice little piece of bread for all sorts of things appetizers french toast we're going to cut three slices of bread the same thickness and i'm using a serrated blade this is a bread knife this also is good for meats like ham 
you know, because this is these little pointy parts here. This is for picking up a meat after you slice it. Slice, pick up. This is also good for tomatoes, things with uh, tender skins. A serrated knife is nice to use because sometimes a sharp straight knife is not sharpened well. I mean, they have to be razor sharp to cut a tomato, a straight knife. When you have a serrated knife, you can sort of gently saw through it. And here we go. Three nice slices of bread right there. And what we're going to do is we're going to keep those in line with where they, with their sizes. So nothing, so things don't make sense. We're not going to stick this small piece of bread over here. We're going to keep it in line. Okay. So I'll put this, tuck this away. We can take our time. This is, we don't have to be rushed. And cooking, I don't know about you guys, but cooking sometimes to me at the end of the day or even in preparation for the next day, I don't know, it kind of calms me down. For some people, I know that's not true. Some people absolutely despise cooking. I like cooking. Just me. This is in a plastic bag inside of the outer bag. And the reason I do this, and then here's a little pro tip. I keep my bread in the fridge. I know that a lot of people think that's a terrible thing to do because the bread does get cold, but your bread will last longer. If you keep it in the fridge and then cut what you need and then put it in a toaster oven or let it warm up in, on the table for a while or even microwave it just for 10 seconds to take the edge off, it, it'll, it is fine. But if you keep it in the fridge, this will last like twice as long as on your counter or in a bread box because mold happens at room temperature. Okay, so let's put this away. All right, now that we have our sandwich cut, it is time for us to butter and build our sandwich. I like to clean up as I go so I don't have too big of a mess to do later. All right, now this is a special, special little thing here. Try to see, put this in a place that you can see it the best. All right, so I want to lay these out. End piece, middle piece, end piece. Okay, this is the middle piece and it's gonna go right here. All right, so I need to butter both sides that are gonna to touch the grill. And I have my butter here. Let me show you this. You know, it's a little glary. There we go. So I have this butter. I cut it up into small pieces. It was a stick of butter, but I didn't set it out early enough. I don't keep my butter out on the counter either. I like everything to stay in the refrigerator where things are safe. Bacteria don't grow. But if you need to soften your butter, you just break it up into smaller pieces like that so more surface area can be warmed up by the air. Um, and then um, it'll soften. I, put, I pulled this out an hour ago, and it's nice and soft for me. Okay. Could you microwave it? You could microwave it, but the chances of when you microwave it, it turns to liquid. And now you can use a liquid butter on there, but sometimes when it turns to liquid, it's not as spreadable. Yeah. And it's more absorbable. So for cooking purposes, we need it to be like this. So I'm gonna take my butter. I'm gonna butter the side that's gonna to touch the grill on the end. And this is, a lot of people have trouble buttering bread, but I just you go nice and easy. There's no rush here. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's side. And I'm gonna just sit back down, face down on my thing, because um, I wanna keep it straight and organized. All right. All right, get it all buttered up. All right, now the middle piece, I want to butter, I, I do not, did it say, yes, I'm going to add a little bit, one side of butter, okay, just a little bit. Butter, butter, butter. Yeah, this is French food, so French food, they like butter, mm -hmm. and I like butter too, but again, like everything else in my life, you just have to moderate yourself, you know, you can't just eat butter, sticks of butter all day long. 
You just have to moderate yourself, okay? And then, in some of these recipes, they say to add um, mayonnaise. Uh, we're not doing that. I'm going the French way. We're going to use Dijon mustard, okay? This is Grey Poupon. Used to be some funny uh, commercials about this brand, but um, any Dijon mustard is fine. Um, Dijon mustard has uh, white wine in it, I believe. Oh, this one doesn't. Good, good, good. But some Dijon mustard does. Um, so we're going to take a little bit of Dijon mustard. And then you're supposed to put the Dijon mustard on one side of your bread, on the middle. You want Dijon mustard spicy. It's got a little kick to it. It's strong. It's a strong... A little bit goes a long way. Yeah, it's a strong mustard. So we're just going to put like a little bit on one slice on the inside. Because remember, we're doing a counterbalance here. We're counterbalancing sweet and salty and savory. So you don't want your mustard to be too strong. So we're going to go ahead. I can smell it. Mmm. Okay, so I'm going to put Dijon mustard on that one inside piece just like that. Okay. And now we're going to shut that. This is super fun. I think I'm going way too fast. Okay, this is Smucker's Red Raspberry Jelly. Oof. So according to the classic French recipes, you are supposed to use a, um, what was that berry? Black red berry? currant. Red jelly. currant. Red currant jelly. The closest thing that I can find to good that. Luck, good luck trying to find that. Yeah, is yeah is red raspberry. I've never even had red currant jelly in my life. Maybe in a restaurant. Right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put red currant jelly on one slice. I'm going to put it on the biggest slice. And we're going to have some of this. You'll see that when we serve this, it's quite beautiful. And again, we don't want to get too crazy. Now, this has little seeds in it. So if you have somebody that can't have little seeds in their food, you don't want to use this one. You could substitute a strawberry jam or a marmalade, I'm sure. Or even um, a grape jelly. But grape jelly usually is slippery. It doesn't have any um, texture to it. Okay, so that's good. All right, let's leave this knife out because we're gonna need that. Okay, now we're gonna start with our, our sandwich meat. Oh good, we're doing fine. Now, the trick to any sandwich is balance. I love doing this, okay? Um, see this so close up? Just the bread. You wanna think about how things come together and literally how things come together. All right, so you want a sandwich to stay glued together. So you want to put your cheese on the outsides because when the cheese melts, that's going to keep your sandwich together. Okay, so I'm going to take the cheese. When you say outside, where you... On the outside, you'll see on the outer areas closest to the pan. Like on the like outer inside part. the sandwich. Inside the sandwich, okay. yes. But on the outside of the inside. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah, uh, now it does. On yeah. the outside of the inside. Yeah. So, um, this glare. I'm trying to turn that. Okay. Anyways, um, maybe, can you shut the curtains? Yep. Yeah. So, that is helpful right there. A little helpful. Not yes. Well. No, that's fine. Okay. It just is. It's okay. So we're going to add one piece of cheese to the size of this bread, maybe a little bit extra. We can have some cheese hanging over the edge, okay, on the third slice there. Here, let me pull this closer. We should angle it down. So there you go. All right. Good. And then we're going to add the next cheese on the other side of the bread that's going to be on the inside toward the inside. Swiss, Swiss. Swiss. This is Swiss. You can use Emmenthaler. You can use Gruyere, which is really nice. Um, Gruyere is a Swiss cheese too. It's right? a Swiss cheese. It's like a higher quality Swiss cheese. Tastes very much more, like the flavor is more intense. And I think both Emmenthaler and Swiss cheese are, are Swiss cheeses, but I think they're a little bit more creamy. This is a normal store-bought Swiss cheese from our local grocery store, the Giant Eagle. I bought the ham, the turkey, and the Swiss cheese all on sale at the Delicatessen. It's a very nice thing to do, especially if you're making sandwiches like this. 
because you're going to be making more for your coworkers or your friends. Okay. All right. Here we go. Next thing. Oh, I'm sorry. I want to put another Swiss cheese in the middle, just for just for safety's sake. Okay, we're going to put a little tiny bit of Swiss cheese on the middle slice. Okay. go cheese is all on now we're going to add our meat so ham and swiss on one side just don't like that glare that's okay don't worry about it here we go smoked turkey on one side and ham and swiss on the other okay so we're going to do the turkey on the small side and i like to get this really close to the right size of my bread so I'm just going to just break it up a little bit with my fingers, my clean hands, to have washed them many times, okay? But then we're gonna take a little bit of the smoked ham. This is smoked ham and smoked turkey from the deli. And we're gonna put the smoked ham on the other side. Let me get a good amount of smoked ham there. There we go. And I'm very particular about my sandwich meat and where it comes from and how the handlers handle the, the meat. Because when you think about sandwich meat and deli meat, you know, they're, they're being handled. They're being opened, packaged, touched, put on slicers. It's just really, really important that, that your sandwich meat is you know, clean, and the people handling your sandwich meat are clean. So they should, in a delicatessen, the safe serve um, and government regulations, and our county regulations, everybody must wear masks, everybody must wear gloves, um, everything must be clean to satisfaction. Um, let me show you the sandwich again. There we go. It's beautiful, okay? Ham, Swiss, turkey, Swiss. Okay. Now we're going to close this up. This is, we're get, it's going to get fun now, guys. All right. And we're going to stack this. So I'm going to put the um, Swiss down here. Oh, I should have had another Swiss there. Okay. There we go. That's what was throwing me off. So I need ham. I need meat and cheese on in between each layer. There we go. This is going to be so good. We're going to put that over there. There. We're going to stack this other piece up here. All right. Good. Now, before we go any step closer, we got to smash this thing. All right. You have to smash your sandwich. And they say put a pan on top of it. I don't really have a heavy, heavy pan that I'm going to pull out and do that with. So I'm just going to take some wax paper. Put the wok on it. Yeah, I can put the wok on it maybe. I'm going to smash this. I don't know if you can see this correctly. There you go. There you go. I'm smashing this sandwich down as hard as I can with all with a good amount of pressure. And I'm strong, so there's no concern there. Okay, good. That feels good. I'll lift this up. I should have put it all in the wax paper. There we go. That's fine. Smash it from the other side. It's going to be good. All right. All right. So before we start, we're going to push this aside. We have to do another little chore. Not a chore. A little, little fun thing. Here we go. We have to make our custard mix. All right. So you're going to take your bowl. Right? I'm gonna just stick this here. Just for fun. I put my pan on top of it. We'll see if it holds. Just for fun. Okay. All right. So in our custard bowl, I'm gonna put two eggs, two large eggs. I even was gonna use my goose eggs, but I decided not to. Or goose eggs, I mean duck eggs. I have duck eggs. My friend gave me, but I'm gonna hold 
because duck eggs are so rich and delicious that you don't really need to put them in something like French toast batter where you're not even going to taste it necessarily. All right, and then we're going to add a little bit of milk, just a splash. Maybe like that much. That's probably a little bit less than a quarter of a cup, maybe an eighth of a cup. Two large eggs. And now we're going to add some nutmeg, which might sound funny to you, but nutmeg is very present in custard flavors or in um, eggnog. Anything involving egg and sweetness, a nutmeg will add that to that. So you just want to put like probably, ooh. Okay, probably like a quarter of a teaspoon. I maybe add a little bit too much there, but it'll be all right. Give yourself a fork. <laughs> Beat that up. This is your fork. Nutmeg has a good strong flavor too. People think it don't, doesn't really have that much of a flavor, but it's a, just a soft, nutty, um, warm, seasonal flavor when you say Patrick yeah it definitely reminds you of Christmas yeah so you put a little nutmeg. maybe Monte Christmas Monte, Monte Christmas Monte Cristo yes. Monte Cristo no I think it, it was named after the Count of Monte Cristo at some point. really I don't know there's some speculation about the Didn't origin he, wasn't but... he the guy that like lost his riches or had or started from nothing and then became something or we have to do more research, but that's a challenge for the audience here. Why don't you do a little research about Monte Cristo, just for fun? It's a Victor Hugo novel. Yeah. I can't say that I read it, though. I watched the movie uh, a long time ago about Monte Cristo's. Okay, here we go. Now it's time to fire up our grill. So what we're gonna do is, oh, we we'll make an excellent time. You want to put the handle away from you, okay, and at all cases, because you do not want to accidentally, you know, hit yourself. I'm going to move this table. Just hit the pan with your wrist if you're clumsy, which, you know, hey, some people are. And then your food goes flying. So I'm going to wait, and I can actually feel when the pan gets hot. Like just by holding my hand above the pan. Don't stick your hand on the pan. But I can tell when my pan is warming up. And it is slightly warming up. So then I'm going to take my sandwich. I'm going to take the whole sandwich first. Okay. And we're going to dip it in this custard first. Okay. So I'm going to take this whole thing. Now some people would say, Tara, you should have used a flat bottom pan. But this is fine. I'm gonna dip it in there and I'm gonna move it around and soak it up, let it soak up as much custard as I can. It's like French toast. Yeah, this is like French toast, exactly. I'm gonna even, there we go. But you're saying like if you could have used like a square baking dish or a lasagna pan or yeah. something like that? Yeah. With a flat bottom. Yep, now I'm gonna, well, then we're gonna put this on the thing and I'm gonna give you some other options too that's fun. So then you're gonna take this whole thing, sopping wet, full of custard, eggy, dish and you're gonna put it right on the pan okay you know, let that sit there for a second for a little bit I'm gonna show you another trick all right if you want to add heat okay you're gonna you can add a lid I don't have a lid for the griddle so here's what you do You need to use a, you need to make a tent, making a tent with foil. So you take a little piece of foil like this, all right, you know, good size piece of foil really, and it's okay if it touches, all right, you're just going to tent, you're just going to loosely lay that kind of like on top of your sandwich, and that's going to kind of help capture some of that heat if you don't have a lid for your pan. Okay, so I have my pan there and I have it tented. You know, just to help keep some of that heat in. That's gonna help cook your sandwich, gonna help cook your egg, gonna help melt that cheese. 
So we're gonna let that there for a couple minutes. We're fine. While we're doing that, I'll tell you about a couple options. As I was doing my research, and this is another whole video, okay? I think that it would be fun to do. Um, they have another uh, other fancy restaurants will take this that sandwich that I dipped in the egg batter, and they will also roll it into um, cat uh, like cornflake cereal. They'll yeah. crunch up some cereal. They'll roll it through something else crunchy, and then they'll actually deep fry it. Now, I've seen that done too, but they also can do it on the griddle that way. As long as there's butter in there somehow, or they use spray butter on the grill, we didn't do that because um, this is a uh, non-stick non -stick griddle, um, and also there's lots of butter in that bread that's going to come through. So we're just going to let that go. But that's a fun idea, right? Added even another layer of flavor. It also seals up the edges. Some people cut their sandwich in half first, and then put the seal on with the, with the cereal so that they can put it on all sides of the grill or in the fryer. So options, it's just fun to play around with recipes and experiment in the kitchen, okay? So the next thing we're gonna do while we're waiting for that is to prepare our toppings and our serving plate because this is like really important stuff. You wanna have, you want to have another little cutting board for cutting in your sandwich. You want to have a beautiful plate to present your sandwich in. This is a light colored sandwich, so I chose a dark plate. Presentation, this was made by one of my teachers and one of my mentors, Father Don. He has passed away. He gave this to me a long, long time ago. Um, so you put your food, your light food in a dark vessel and it makes it look really, makes it pop, makes it look really nice. Sometimes we eat with our eyes and our noses before we actually eat with our mouth. Um, so if something looks good, it smells good, it's nice. I'm gonna show you that presentation afterwards. Another thing is this beautiful thing called a ramekin. We will be using this to put some jelly on the side. I'm gonna do that right now for you. Um, nice to have a little bit of the jelly served, not jelly, preserves, served with your sandwich. Smucker's Red Raspberry Preserves. So I'm going to put some of that right in here. Good. Good. The contrast mm -hmm. of the red and the green. Yes, red and green are complementary. Here's a little art lesson. When they say complementary, yes, they do look good together. Um, they say complimentary, like they will look the best together. I don't know if they will look the best together, but they're in the friendly zone. But complimentary in art, the art world means two colors on the opposite side of the color wheel that actually complete each other. So if I were to mix red and green, they're on the opposite side of the color wheel, that will turn brown. The completion of the color brown is what we mean when we say complementary. The same with blue and orange, purple and yellow. You know, they all, when you mix those together, you get different shades of brown. So a lot of people don't know that. So, okay, let's check our sandwich. Ooh, it smells good. We're gonna flip it. Oh yeah, I can smell it. Oh yeah. Looks like a pancake. Yes. Let me show you the top of that. It does look like a pancake. See that? Beautiful. We're gonna give it some time on that side, and then we're gonna give it some time, a little time on the edge, I think. And like I said, I really wanna tent this to make sure that inside gets melty, okay? While we're waiting for that, we're gonna prepare our special ingredient too for this, and that is our powdered sugar. I don't know if you guys know this, but you'll see it served. Um, if you want to, also dust your dish with a little tiny bit of powdered sugar. I'm just gonna cut a small opening in the powdered sugar. Because we don't need a lot, so we don't wanna make a big mess. So I'm gonna do this over the sink. So this is a low calorie dish, right? Um, no, <laughs> okay. this is not a low calorie dish, uh, okay. unfortunately. Okay. But, um, there, I got just enough that we're gonna need is a quarter cup, okay? Powdered sugar is just ground up sugar. 
Okay, so to keep our powdered sugar nice and neat, we are so going is to confectioner to sugar and powdered sugar the same uh -huh. thing? Yeah. Yep. Confectioner is like the person who works with sugar. So they're just like a term that like kind of like um, gaffer's tape. You know, we call it some people call it duct tape. Some people call it duct tape, but the original, one of the original terms is gaffer's tape because gaffers, who are people that work behind the scenes in the stage production, are gaffers. So that's gaffer's tape. This is confectioner sugar. So a person that works with sugar, a candy maker, uses this a lot. So, okay. Oh, I think it's hot. Okay. I feel like it's going to burn. So let me get a plate to put this on. Because we're going to do something tricky. I don't want it to burn. So we're going to turn this off. I'm going to take this baby off. Oh, it's beautiful. Okay, what I'm going to do though is I'm going to just nuke this for 10 seconds. Just to make sure it's heated, radiant heat from the microwave. Heats from the inside out. I just want to make sure everything's nice and melty. Okay. Time. All right, good. Good, good, good. Heat's off. Just to be safe, I'm going to move my pan off of the heat just to protect my pan. Okay, because no pan, every pan has a lifetime. And the more you, you know, help it out by taking it off the heat and things, the better, it'll, longer it'll last. Okay. All right. Oh yeah, everything's melted. Everything is melted in this thing. Beautiful, beautiful. Let's let you see this side view here. Let's let you see the top view right now. We're gonna cut it in half and we're gonna do food presentation. And by that time, it'll let it cool down a little bit. All right. So we are going to cut it on the plate versus on this cutting board because I feel like it's going to melt. This is one of those cheap cutting boards. All right, I'm going to use my handy dandy serrated knife that I use with the bread in the, in the first place. I'm going to cut this on a bias, um, which means a long diagonal. Uh, if you were cutting something on a bias that was in a circle, you'd be cutting it at an angle, a diagonal angle. We're gonna do the same thing for this sandwich. So it might be a little, a little warm, so that's okay. We just gotta go nice and easy and take our time. Like I said, we're not in any kind of rush. This is also not the neatest sandwich to eat. When if you're gonna eat this in public and use your hands, that's wonderful. But if you are going to, um, Want to use a fork and knife? That's wonderful too. Okay, here's the inside. It's beautiful. It's not super melty. I, I think I want it to be a little bit more melty. So I'm going to put it back in the microwave. So that's the tricky part, guys, with your pan, your pan time, and your level of heat your thickness of bread and like containing that heat so that you can get the heat all the way into the center. Okay, now we should be good. All right, here we go. That's a little bit better. Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna put, I'm gonna plate this into our pan, so into our beautiful bowl, so everybody can see it. Mm -hmm. Nice, I might even stack it like this, beautiful. And then what I'm going to do is, since this ramekin is not gonna really, well, it will, it will. We're gonna put it right there. And then get this, guys, here's the kicker. Here's the best part of all. Where's the other knife I have for Patrick right here? You're gonna take this powdered sugar, all right? Let's get this so you can see. You're going to take this strainer right here, all right, and you're going to put this slowly in here. 
This is the reason why we keep these things around because you can't just dump powdered sugar on things. You need to sift it on there. Otherwise, oh. you just have a giant mound of. Otherwise, yeah, you just have a sugar. giant mound of powdered sugar, and just to make it nice, and just don't worry about getting it on the jet on the jelly or on the jam. Yeah, that looks good. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, let me put this back over there, and then I want to uh, take a picture, and then I'm gonna have Patrick try it. Oh, oh, goody. So good. It looks so good. Good thing I'm not on a diet. Right, before I should have him try it too, I want to show you guys up close a little bit more. Oops. Okay. Oh, it almost blends into my table, which is kind of neat. Mm -hmm. Oh, Monte Cristo. Okay. Now, let me show you, the viewing mm -hmm. audience, just a little bit better shot. Mm-hmm. Can you see that? Mm-hmm. The camera quality is not so hot as we like, but we're getting there. We make improvements every single day. Okay. This is just a delicious, delicious thing. Okay, now Patrick, you can come over here. But what I want you to do is eat this however you like. You can eat it by hand or you can eat it by fork and knife. What do you, what do you like to do? Oh, I think I'll cut a piece off. Why don't you get your fork out of the fridge and let me see if I'm getting you. Yeah, I maybe fork. I do need a fork. Okay. Yeah. Or you can try with your hands, whatever you prefer. Well, it'll be easier to cut this way, I think. Are you? Mm-hmm. No, I'm not getting that. The jelly? Am I getting you? You're getting me, you're not getting the sandwich. Oh, okay. Okay, Ready? I'm following the sandwich. Uh -uh. Okay, good. Mmm, what do you think, babe? Oh my Swiss cheese. You like it? Oh yeah. Wow. It's fantastic. Wow. 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 You gotta try this. Okay, I'm gonna try it. We have time. There's so many flavors. I have time. There's Dijon. Okay. There's, oh my goodness sakes. Okay, let me get this. There's. I'm gonna have a bite. Wow. Yeah. That's something else. You make me excited to try this. Mm. Okay. Mm. Wow. Mmm. So many flavors. Mmm. Oh my goodness. Mm, wait. Sweet and savory is right. Let me give it the camera. I can okay. taste all of those flavors. They're very bold. I can't agree with him more, but let me just say, I think my only thing with this, I, I would want mine to be a little bit more crunchy next time, so I might keep it on the, somehow get it more crunchy. Higher flame. Yeah, and more higher flame, like Patrick just said, and more Dijon. I think I can get a little bit more Dijon. Mm. It tastes really good. I so you got was... you can taste that smoked ham and that smoked turkey and definitely the Swiss. Yep. I put enough cheese on that, probably too much. The sweet of the sugar and of the raspberry jam does come through against that Dijon. I'm I'm really surprised. You can taste every single part of the sandwich. A lot of times you can't, so that's really interesting to me. It's been years since I've had a Monte Cristo, so. All right, guys, we are, um, it's, we're going to stop a little bit early today, but I just want to say thank you for watching us. Um, we're going to keep going with these videos, do many, many more. We're just getting warmed up, so we're going to go around the globe, all right, for cultural cooking with Miss Tara and Mr. Patrick. Thank you. That was so You're good. You're welcome. All right. The end. The end.